perjalanan saya di FFG adalah perjalanan mencari impian. Bukan bukan membuat impian, nyari. Karena gini, saya bilang bahwa hidup saya ter, terbukakan. Dan saya akan selamanya mengenang jasa teman saya ini yang juga mengajak saya ke komunitas FFG. Namanya adalah Pak Endri Utoyo Samsuri. Beliau adalah suaminya Ibu Filan Po. Terus aku tanya, apaan sih itu FFG? Karena saya cari-cari FFG saat itu tuh belum banyak beritanya. Yeah. Endri bilang gini, oh itu komunitas bisnis. Oh iyalah, bukan buat saya, bener gak? Orang saya kerja, iya kan? Nggak, nggak buat gue banget gitu yeah. Oke, okay, saya cuma oke okay aja gitu kan Nah ini saya dimulailah prosesnya saya Saya dimanusiakan di FFG Disinilah saya sangat menghargai uh, mentor saya My angel yang Tuhan kirim gitu ya Ibu Vilan Kwok Thank you so much Ibu Vilan uh, Sabar banget gitu ya Brother, sister Saya karena orangnya sangat logik Dan karena juga posisi saya, gitu ya, uh, pasti ada arogansi lah ya. ya. Saat itu saya udah IT head, saya udah uh, sokot ke CIO, gitu ya. <laughs> Dan saya tuh orang gitu, karena saya orang yang kata kuda, jadi apapun yang saya lakukan, saya lakukan sendiri. Saya bukan tipe orang yang mau gangguin orang lain, enggak. Begitu masuk ke komunitas ini, saya, <laughs> saya... Saya mulai sadar gitu, wah dahsyat banget ya ini prosesnya ya. Saya yang tadinya nggak peduli orang harus belajar untuk peduli sama orang. Ya. Saya yang tadinya nggak sensitif harus belajar sensitif. Karena kalau nggak, uh, saya yang nggak nggak belajar gitu, saya nggak bertumbuh. Nah, dahsyatnya adalah di rumah situasi juga dahsyat. Ya dong, karena anakku. Terus uh, Ryan punya adik juga Audi. Nah ini ini membuat saya menjadi uh, komplit lah ya. Secara paket tuh stresnya saya tuh komplit. Utang saya banyak. Akhirnya kan Bu Filan bilang saya gini, Chris, kalau mau duitnya banyak, ikut mentoring program. Saya pikir, aduh dahsyat juga nih ya. Gue nggak pernah lakuin bisnis, nggak juga ngomong sama orang, semua pakai logika. Akhirnya mentoring program. Saya merasa gini, Tuhan selama ini saya hidup tanpa impian gitu. Dan saya nggak ngerti bahwa ternyata impian saya bisa jadi kenyataan. Sejak saat itu saya belajar bermimpi. I want to know more about this community. And he asked me to come again tomorrow to attend the second uh, training. And after this training, I tell him I am really, really ready to follow you because what you are doing is what I want to do in my life. That's the way I do this community. The first challenge is my office because at the beginning I work in my office from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I don't have mm-hmm. enough time to do this business. And the second uh, challenge is my family. My family didn't believe me at the beginning. Because for wow. them, this is not a good community, it's not a good business. And the, the, the third challenge is my friend. My colleague doctor didn't believe on me because for them, I am, a, I am selling sanitary napkins. And I tell them, I'm not selling this product, but I'm building a very big community, a very big network around the world. Yeah, why, why I say that? Because uh, in my first three years of my MLM, I am being taught totally what Pak Onggi shared with me. Uh, for example, yeah, uh, when I met Pak Onggi, I was driving an Audi A3, two liter turbo. Yeah, And that time I was 22 years old. When I went to see Pak Onggi, honestly, my intention is to show off to him what I can, what I have uh, as uh, during that time, 22 years old. So, I believe when he came to see me, he didn't want to show me anything. Uh. It's like nothing to show. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that that is like a, a totally different kind of uh, mindset already. Yeah. Uh, so in my first MLM, it's like we are trying to show off to everyone that uh, 
we have something. But really, do we have something or not? Whether we are rich or not, if I put it more straightforward, yeah, is another question. But 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 I was being told to show off. Yeah. So when I earned my first, maybe uh, sum of money, my upline uh, encouraged me to spend on, you know, the 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 symbol of wealth. Uh. At my age, I didn't buy house, so that time I bought car, just to show off. So when I met Bounty, his first uh, suggestion was to sell my Audi away. It took me about, uh, yeah, it took me about one month or so or two months to to agree. Yeah, and after that, of course, now I really want to thank him for that wonderful, wonderful uh, suggestion because uh, that advice has totally changed my mindset about handling money. Uh, yeah, until today, how I manage my wealth, my family, my my parents, expenses, and everything. Yeah, all started from that first move to sell to sell away my car, who, which is a liability to me. Yeah, when I was twenty two years old. So that is just one thing. Lah. There are many things that uh, that he told me in FFG that is totally opposite of what I I was told. Yeah. You have been you have been gone through uh, building this business from country to country, many country at a very young age, and there's a lot of experience during this journey. Can you share one of the most interesting you you can re- recall back? You know how you feel when you first start traveling one by one country building this business? Yeah, that is this uh, the most wonderful part about FFG or how I learned from Paungi uh, and of course. All my mentors, yeah. Because uh, uh, as I learned the system, the mentoring program, the FFG way, I felt that yeah. Singapore is uh, just a country, yeah. But actually, FFG can conquer the whole world. So uh, as a young man, I was feeling like uh, you know I don't want to stay where I I am. Because you know Singapore population is only 5 million or 5.5 million now but previously maybe 5 million. So I feel that you know I want to expose myself to the bigger market or the bigger world. So uh, I try at that age of 22, 23, I went to almost every Southeast Asia country. I went to Philippines, I went to Vietnam, I went to Thailand, I went to Indonesia. And of course, I went to your beautiful country, Cambodia. Yeah, but Cambodia was later. Yeah. So I ventured into every country and uh, I tried looking for prospect. Honestly, not many successful cases, if I were to say today. But I want to say that it is actually very successful. Sometimes we just take some simple action and the action can have a meaning in the life of others. And on that area, I'm lucky to know that I do something a capital in the life of uh, Dr. Alex. But actually, I was just doing my um, exercise, my daily exercise, like uh, uh, share about my story, share about my opportunity, share about uh, my life changing to others in the area to inspire others. And uh, God uh, bless because uh, Dr. Alex is uh, one of the part who trust on me and uh, open his heart to me. And then uh, through that, um, I just do my job uh, as being a son of God to try to explain to him what I received from uh, my different upline, especially Papa Sudiento, Sugando, Vincentius, and uh, Joe Eileen. Uh, without forget the founder of uh, FFG who just tried since uh, 2010 to lead me how to become a better person. And on this case, uh, Dr. Alex is one of the greatest person in my life in the area of um, soft relationship. Uh, he's very kind man, uh, very elegant man in the area of um, good relationship. Is He never complain, he just follow, he, he never do wrong or do things in the area or make some mistake. Uh, actually, believe in me, maybe Dr. Alex must say that uh, I inspire him. But actually, sorry to say it, he inspired me a lot. And uh, he's very humble man, even background of doctor, have his own 
uh, clinic. Uh, he's not poor, but easy to lead. Means uh, actually, he said that he I inspire him, but really, 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 he inspire me a lot and help me also to change my life and become surely a better version of me. Sebetulnya kalau mau diceritakan awal mulanya bertemu dengan Tris ini, ini menarik karena Tris kan awalnya itu adalah temannya Pak Endri. Jadi teman Pak Endri, jadi sebetulnya malah saya nggak kenal dengan Ibu Tris ini. Wow, uh, oke, okay. seorang CIO, gimana caranya membukakan hati dan membukakan uh, pikiran dan membukakan, you know, like uh, the mindset dari seorang CIO bahwa actually this this is so amazing. Not only the business, the community is so amazing gitu loh. Jadi kan benar-benar itu juga sesuatu yang menjadi uh, homeworknya saya gitu ya. Cuma saya berterima kasih sekali karena I'm not alone. Saya punya Ibu Yuliani, Ibu Florent, Pak Matias, dan of course uh, Energy Founder Pak Onggi gitu. Jadi kita sebetulnya tuh sama-sama gitu bareng-bareng melihat oke okay, this lady is amazing gitu ya. Satu kapal dengan Pak Uwin juga dan Uh, dulu saya nggak tahu banyak tentang Bu Tristi, jadi yeah. tuh pada saat mulai kenal, lebih kenal, lebih dekat, oh oke, okay. jadi baru lebih tahu mengenai keadaan family-nya. Nah ini menarik banget tuh dibilang, sebetulnya perjalanan jadinya Bu Tristi ini tuh satu transformasi yang kita lihat tuh, wow, is a wow gitu loh. Satu transformasi yang sangat luar biasa. I love you, Meng, a lot. So when yesterday he said about, uh, we briefing, uh, we have a briefing. Yesterday, I really say that the uh, God is uh, really put him together in the FMP with me. Uh, it's uh, one of the, the blessing one because it's a lot of young people together with me since the 20 years ago. One of the, the strongest, strongest, strongest one love FMG and love people is Jimmy. So that's why now he is become like this. Okay, uh, for me, is I learned a lot, uh, Terry. I learned a lot from him. Actually, when he said that, it's a uh, why I don't know what is uh, why these two lady leave me. Actually, that one is uh, not our plan. It's God's plan for you. <laughs> <laughs> I also, you know, what? it's a lot of things. Actually, we have a lot of experience. Okay, but I can say, yeah, uh, just remember about you uh, when you ask that uh, Cambodian. But I know that you and the Chimeng and all the the team uh, is a really family. It's a really family. I remember. When it's one time, one one thing has happened, really happened, or really, really, really amazing happened in Kim Meng life, and you re, you the one that really cry, cry, cry badly, okay, <laughs> for him and for Kim Meng, and that is a family and all the, the children, all the, the children, I mean the team in Cambodia. So what I can say, Kim Meng is one of the, the strongest. Uh, strongest uh, young person is not only young okay even that he is very young but is one of the strongest one in here cannot imagine how that if he can stay in Solomon you know almost two years alone okay I mean it's not alone of course we have a team there but I mean that it's from the Singaporean and then he can just really upgrade the mind you know why all the sharing like FMG event uh, we have the weekly we have monthly we have uh, also annual freedom celebration and so on and we have so many events all the event is based on true story we never put somebody on the stage without they performing anything so meaning that, that's why i say uh, i i love the work of inspirator so like dr rao become the inspirator for dr alex because dr rao, rao is telling the truth and mm. what life changing of him in terms of financial in terms of mental spiritual and and the rest of of the achievement in the life that, that i think because of the true story we don't add anything uh, that is not never happened yeah. uh, that, i think this is essential of of the of the, of the, the reason behind Tris itu satu sosok yang mungkin bisa saya bilang adalah mewakili banyak orang di dunia di dalam top yang sangat eksekutif dan dia kebetulan juga bukannya Bukan smart lagi ya, atau belakangnya adalah engineer. Saya sebetulnya kenal matris itu, saya tahu, saya tahu kan, saya teman baiknya Vilan. Jadinya waktu itu memang kita pernah ada di satu tempat retret, dan dia sebagai salah satu wakil apa ketua gitu di dalam retret itu ya. Saya itu di dalam kepala tuh udah ketanam bro, ini orang gitu. 
Jadi waktu pas giliran datang ke presentasi, udah langsung saya mampir langsung suruh, mm, bawa ini orang gitu. Siis gitu, siis gitu loh. Kalau ini dikatakan terpoles di dalam FFG, dia akan menjadi satu big leader untuk dunia. Itu di dalam kepala saya gitu, karena secara isi itu memang FFG itu membawa orang bisa ke situ gitu. Nah yang ada memang Sri saat itu ya, dengan kondisi dia punya level seperti itu, dan saya juga surprise banget gitu ya, dan memang kebanyakan orang-orang seperti ini ya, yang yang artinya adalah dedikasinya tinggi, seperti itu ya. Itu salah satu daya tarik juga adalah, di belakang adalah secara pride dan secara ego, ada di situ bro. Jadi waktu itu adalah hmm, uang, gitu bro. Padahal sebetulnya, Tris itu bukan uang. Uang menjadi satu majoritas ya. Dan ternyata lucunya adalah uang yang sekarang ini yang pakaknya di dalam hutang. 500 juta sebagian sebagian besar orang tuh, ayo kecil banget kan cuma 500 juta. Eh jangan salah. 10 juta pun menjadi beban yang sangat besar. Karena bicara tentang tentang hutang gitu kan. Beban energi gitu. Nah ini yang sebetulnya digali, didik oleh, oleh, oleh FFG. melalui kita kita ya dan itu sebetulnya karena Chris nah, saat itu dia belum punya dia nggak nggak ada dream gitu bah- bahaya banget dan untuk orang dengan top seperti dia jalur petnya itu nggak ketemu dreamnya nggak ada dreamnya gitu bongkar ini tentang visinya dia tentang dreamnya dia dan tahu bahwa seandainya dia harus bisa memutuskan untuk dia bisa akhirnya dipakai Untuk dirinya dia dipakai untuk dunia gitu Bahwa potensi seorang Chris bukan potensi hanya sebagai seorang top eksekutif Tapi bisa dibawa sampai ke dunia di dalam arusnya toolnya FMG So at the time I tell you ya yeah, uh, My impression about Jimeng Oke, okay, this maybe not everybody can handle this situation Me and Yuliani just a both of us, oh we have friends ya yeah. We, we 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 stay in the airport uh, don't know where to go don't know where to contact we just try to contact anybody we contact our contact in South Africa in Indonesia everywhere okay and but for Chimeng this one if he is not strong he will not go to Nigeria alone okay why because everybody know Nigeria is a red zone right oh yeah I mean We already arranged the the pick up everything, right? But now he is alone. Yeah. So this is we can show you that uh, somebody that really put himself ready, ready to face the challenge. So that's why if you say how Chimeng today, it's because of the process. Another good showcase this today untold story. You know, Chiming is a very young age already drive a sport car. In I think 22 years old, drive a sport car is a very very uh, so people call so successful. But Chiming, in the sense, uh, also tell the truth to me. Actually, he say actually, frankly speaking, he also have the financial challenge, even the driving the sport car. Because the purpose of driving sport car is to show off. Uh, what I understand, I know uh, why network marketing people always show show off uh, by the cars, by the the, the the beautiful home and and traveling around the world. That is not nothing wrong. That is okay as long as you can handle your basic needs. The basic needs meaning uh, your cash flow, daily cash flow, and the way of how you see the, the cash flow and, and the manage of your money in the correct way. According to me, this young guy actually uh, in the so-called, sorry I can say shaming, misleading from the so-called his leader that uh, forced, so-called forced him to show off. In FFG concept, we don't do that way. I never ask people to buy a car, buy a home or whatever to show off. The most important thing, you have the peaceful mind about money first. It's not to show off because we want to the long run in a business. The most important thing, if you you are not peaceful mind with money, your energy is not good. That is why when when he he told me that actually he has a challenge of money, I said, "Chiming, no point. You show off. In why you have the challenge of the money? Better you you sell your car." And he is so so good. I mean, he follow. He follows. He follow and. 
Actually, according to me, that's the the first step of the breakthrough of his mindset about money. I'm so happy today. I know Chiming now now is not only uh, earning quite good money. He also invests his money now. Uh, that's why he is so peaceful mind in this business. Aside of his uh, consistently income passive income, he also enjoy the passive income from his investment. This is what I understand. Uh, for that, I'm happy for him, and especially he not only success to handle his own money, but he he also support the parents. Uh, I think he is a man of responsibility. Okay, for that I say respect to Jimmy. Yeah. Yes, because when you study for a long time, when you get many degrees, your ego also grows. And mm. as a time, as at the beginning, that's why I challenges also. Ego is very high because I'm a doctor, and people yeah. around me. Uh, look at me as a doctor, but when I came in boot camp and I came, oh, I see many person who has many degrees than me, but very humble. And I yeah. tell Alex, be humble in life if you want to grow. Be humble if you want to grow. And since that time, I was very humble, and I learned a lot from everybody, from everything. Kita tahu bahwa sebenarnya ini yang terjadi di masyarakat. Internasional bahkan banyak top eksekutif uh, sepertinya untouchable ya kan kalau orang sepinta selalu kan CIO, CEO dan sebagainya seolah-olah untouchable kemudian bayangan kita dalam hidup mereka sudah wow gitu kan uh, posisi tinggi ternyata sama juga ternyata ada tantangan hidup yang mungkin tantangan hidupnya orang kalangan bawah ya kalau kalau di level eksekutif kan sudah boleh top eksekutif ya jenjang karir yang sudah di puncak lah mungkin yang dibandingkan office boy gitu office boy juga punya tantangan ya kan mungkin level manager di tengahnya juga ada tantangan so dari ceritanya Tris ini sebenarnya actually kita all human gitu ya kita manusia setiap manusia di level apapun pasti ada tantangan hidup bisa jadi kalau kita lihat ya tantangan hidupnya si Tris ini buat orang office boy, wow, 500 juta gede banget, ya kan? <laughs> ya kan, mungkin untuk pengusaha kelas atas, 500 juta itu nothing. Buat Tris waktu itu, bukan masalah kalau kita lihat ya, bukan masalah 500 jutanya. Yang kami lihat bahwa sebenarnya itu membebani dia. Karena kalau kalau seseorang selalu membawa beban, dia tidak akan bisa move forward ke depan. Yeah. Makanya saya waktu itu salah satu menggali dia sebenarnya impianmu apa gitu. Kalau selama kamu tidak menemukan impianmu, ya kamu akan stuck di situ. Sebenarnya hal-hal semacam ini yang terjadi di dunia internasional seperti itu, bukan hanya di Indonesia. Nah, menariknya dari sini Tris belajar satu hal bahwa segala sesuatu yang menyebabkan dia PFM-nya salah, waktu itu ada Florian, ada Yuliani, ada Vilan, kami bersama-sama dengan dia, beresin utangmu, apapun caranya. Kalau perlu jual rumah, jual rumah. Kalau perlu jual mobil, jual mobil. Nah, tapi uh, in short, akhirnya dia nggak jadi luar jual rumah, tapi dia push the limit bagaimana menyelesaikan utangnya. Saat kalau saya perhatikan di situ, utangnya terselesaikan, bebannya mulai ringan. Nah, bebannya mulai ringan, dan kalau saya boleh tambahkan lagi ya, pada saat dia perjalanan ke Afrika gitu ya, makanya kenapa banyak orang bilang, orang-orang yang sukses itu adalah orang-orang yang banyak melakukan perjalanan. Kalau kita hanya dengar cerita, kalau kita hanya baca buku dan nonton film dan sebagainya, memang terinspirasi, tapi tidak menyentuh ke dalam hati yang paling dalam. Nah, pada saat seseorang datang sendiri mengalami, itu menyentuh banget. Itu itu sudah tidak mewakili, tidak dilewati oleh film, buku atau atau orang cerita, tapi dia ada di dalam itu. Thank you for watching and we we going to see you next with our amazing untold story. Thank you. Bye bye.